Today's episode of the More You Know podcast is brought to you by CrowdQuestion, a brand new social communication platform focused on connecting crowds to bring everyone closer to their community, as well as enhancing any occasion. Rather than being a social media platform focused on content and advertising, they're focused on communication and connection. Learn more about the platform and download the app free at crowdquestion.com. trying to make it all make sense the more you know podcast today i want to share simon wiesenthal's journey to crafting a life of significance so simon wiesenthal was born on new year's eve in 1908 in austria hungary his father was a wholesaler who emigrated from the russian empire this was due to the frequent persecution of jews his father became a reservist in the army and was called to active duty in 1914 at the start of world war one he then ended up dying in combat in 1915 Shortly after that, the Russian army took control over Galicia where they were living, and Simon, his younger brother Hillel, and his mother fled to Vienna. From here they began moving back and forth due to the area changing hands several times, and by Wiesenthal's high school years, he was living in Buchach. Then a year after starting high school, his brother Hillel died from breaking his back. Shortly thereafter, his mom remarried and moved, and Simon began living with his girlfriend's family. She eventually became his wife. Wiesenthal had an interest in art and drawing, and because of this he chose to study architecture. But unfortunately, the first college he applied to, he was turned away because of the school's Jewish quota. They already had too many Jews in their opinion, so he ended up going to the Czech Technical University in Prague. Then upon graduating, he apprenticed as a building engineer. While working as an architectural engineer, the Nazis invaded where he was living in 1939. His stepfather was then arrested as a capitalist, and his mom moved in with him, only because he was able to bribe the Nazis. Shortly thereafter, like many Jewish residents, he had to register for forced labor, essentially becoming a slave. He was also forced to live in the Luau ghetto, which the Nazis set up. And within six months, he was arrested by the Nazis, and almost executed. Simon and his wife were then transferred to the Janowska concentration camp. He spent time painting swastikas and other inscriptions on captured Soviet railway engines, and his wife was forced to work on polishing brass and nickel. While he was in the concentration camp, he obtained false identity papers for his wife. She was then able to travel to Warsaw, where she did spend time in two labor camps, but she did survive. Throughout both of their times in concentration camps, they experienced horrendous things, but were eventually reunited at the end of the war in 1945. Within three weeks of Simon's liberation, he prepared a list of around a hundred names of suspected Nazi war criminals, such as guards, camp commandants, and members of the Gestapo. He then presented it to a war crimes office for an American counterintelligence corps in Mauthausen. There he worked as an interpreter, accompanying officers who were carrying out arrests. Shortly thereafter, he began working for the American Office of Strategic Services for about a year, continuing to collect information on both victims and perpetrators of the Holocaust. During this time with 30 other volunteers, they collected 3,289 depositions from concentration camp survivors, which would be used in the future to bring Nazis to justice. And while most Polish Jews who survived the Holocaust chose to leave, Wiesenthal chose to stay. And this is because he knew prominent Nazi Adolf Eichmann's family still lived in the area. Eichmann was in charge of the transportation and deportation of Jews. After the war, Eichmann hid, using forged identity papers. He eventually escaped to Italy, and then Argentina. But Simon continuously monitored the rest of his family members living in the area, until they vanished in 1952. After spending time continuing to track him, he located Eichmann in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He passed this information along to Mossad agents, which is the intelligence agency for Israel. And after confirming his identity, they arrested Eichmann. Along with Eichmann, he tracked down and was responsible for arresting many other prominent Nazis, such as Franz Stengel, who was the supervisor at the Hartheim Euthanasia Center, as well as Hermine Bronsteiner, who served as a guard at concentration camps, known for being extremely cruel and sadistic. And he also found Joseph Mengel, who was a medical officer assigned to Auschwitz. Here Mengel performed terrible unscientific and often deadly experiments on Jews. Throughout a few decades, Wiesenthal was responsible for the capturing and prosecution of many Nazis. This resulted in him being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 1985, and Simon being known as the most prominent Nazi hunter. Simon Wiesenthal faced struggles in early life, with his father dying, having to move, and being rejected due to being Jewish. Once he became a young adult, his life was ripped away from him and he was forced into a concentration camp. He faced that adversity and survived though. From here he was inspired to become a Nazi hunter and track down terrible prominent Nazis, bringing them to justice. For me this is one of the most inspiring examples of someone crafting a life of significance. 
I hope this talk makes a positive impact in your life. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening or watching it. Check out other episodes. Leave a review. Follow the podcast on social media at More You Know Pod. And sign up for CrowdQuestion to ask me questions about the episode. Again, thank you for listening as we propel through podcasting with the more you know. I'm just trying to make it all make sense. The more you know podcast.